Here I have the Bourne Harbour cycle for sodium chloride, which contains some upwards arrows and some downwards arrows, representing endothermic and exothermic enthalpy changes, respectively. But why do they point up and down? Why are some of these endothermic and some of them exothermic? In this tutorial, I'm going to explain why. So as we can see here, the arrows point up for endothermic processes and down for exothermic. And I'm going to explain each one of them in turn. Check out the timestamps in the video description if you want to go to a specific one. We're starting off here with the enthalpy of formation for NaCl, and that's from its elements in their standard states. And that's one mole of our compound just there. And we can see here that this one is exothermic, and the reason for that is best explained with bonds broken and bonds made. There's more energy given out when the bonds in the giant ionic lattice of sodium chloride are formed than is required to break the bonds in the giant metallic lattice of sodium and the simple molecular lattice of chlorine. Next up, we've got the enthalpy of atomization, which is for the sodium. Now here, what we need to do is go from solid sodium to gaseous sodium, so we're creating an atomic gas. What we're doing here is breaking metallic bonds, and that requires energy, so it's an endothermic process. Very similar next, we're moving on to the enthalpy of atomization for the chlorine, going from half a mole of Cl2 here to Cl gas. What we're doing here is breaking covalent bonds, and so once again, in order to break that electrostatic attraction between a shared pair of electrons and the nuclei of the two bonded atoms, which is our covalent bond in the Cl2 molecules, that's going to require energy to break that attraction. Next up, we've got ionization energy. Not lots of people think of ionization energy as an enthalpy change, but it does have units of kilojoules per mole like all of the others. Now for ionization energy, what we're breaking isn't a bond. It's endothermic because we're breaking the electrostatic attraction between the valence electron, that's the outer electron, and the positive nucleus. So we're breaking that attraction there. Don't slip up and say that you're breaking bonds with ionization energy. Next up, we've got some downwards arrows on this side. And our first one here is electron affinity. This one has only really ever come up on one exam that I've noticed historically. Now, the question asked suggests why the electron affinity, and it was for chlorine, is an exothermic value. For this, what we need to consider is that there is a net attraction between the chlorine atom and the additional electron, and that the Cl- is more stable. And so because of that, this is an exothermic enthalpy change. Finally here, we've got the lattice enthalpy. Now, hopefully this one is kind of an obvious why this one is gonna be very exothermic. It's because we've got these two ions here and they are going to form a bond. And when they come together, they give out loads of energy in forming that giant ionic lattice. That's why these lattice enthalpy values are very exothermic. There's loads of energy given out on that bond formation. If you'd like to be taken through a tutorial on what the Bourne Harbour cycle looks like in more detail, including an example with a second electron affinity, then click the link on screen now because that's going to take you straight to that, along with loads of other videos on my channel. Much like this, we've got the standard hydrogen electro tutorial, which explains all the ins and outs of what's going on for your physical chemistry, and we've got some good NMR videos going on. So until next time, everyone, happy revising.